On paper, George Gould made sense as a presidential candidate, decades of private sector experience as the founder of Harvey Norman Osea, and a stint as Singapore's non-resident ambassador to Morocco. Once he opened his mouth, however, all that was overshadowed. His standard of spoken English became the main story when he declared that Singapore needs change instead of change. The moment sparked parodies and remixes. The excitement of having a serious contender for Taman Shan Ugaram before in Kok Song and Tan Kin Lian did the same faded swiftly for some. The man even had to respond to criticisms over his poor English, which he explained makes him appear more authentic. To his credit, he seems to be a good sport about the ribbing. At least judging from the TikTok clip of his working on his English pronunciation with a private tutor. Alas, Go's presidential beat didn't pan out, though not because of how he speaks. Part of the president's job involves representing the country at diplomatic events, so it's easy to see why Singaporeans would expect Go to speak well or, at the very least, pronounce words correctly. It's not just a matter of communication. After all, he is still intelligible and clearly speaks well enough for him to excel in the business world. But there are valid concerns that a president speaking halting English would be mortifying on the international stage. One Reddit commenter said, imagine him speaking at global events. My God, Singapore is going to be the laughing stock of the world. He's just going to be an embarrassment. George isn't the only public figure who's been judged for the way he speaks. Even among our parliamentarians, PM Lee's British accented English is seen as proper, while Chon Chan Singh's decidedly more singlish affectations are frowned upon by some. And Hang Sui Keats' bizarre East Coast planned speech was certainly consequential. While criticism of a public figure's public speaking skills is fair, it's arguably less justifiable for us to openly mock them for misspeaking or how they pronounce certain words. Expecting a public office holder to have public speaking chops is one thing. Turning a mispronunciation into a meme is another. Consider also the Singaporeans who might speak the exact same way. We are essentially telling them that the way they speak is wrong and deserving of mocking. Judging and criticizing the way others speak is pretty much ingrained in us, thanks to some 23 years of spec good English campaigns and the sidelining of Singlish. Our local patois. The expectation for Singaporeans to speak proper English is clear. The campaign's very first slogan was speak well. Be understood. This only reinforces the point that if you can't speak standard English, you don't actually speak well, and you can't or won't be understood," one colleague opines. If we go even earlier than that, learning English during our parents' or grandparents' time was a luxury. So therein started the us versus them mentality. To be perfectly candid, I find myself falling into the same judgy patterns as the keyboard warriors mocking go. When I come across egregiously poor English online, from a business. Another social media user, or even on dating apps, my first reaction is to screen grab it, show it to a friend, and laugh about it. It only struck me that we were being slightly mean-spirited when we were poking fun at one man who said his irrational fear was B. Yes, B. Singular.